Okay, so uh, this is the last topic of uh, unit number one. In this <laughs> class, I discuss about the diode circuits uh, and uh, how can we use the different diode for this clipping and clamping operation. Hopefully, you have seen the rectification operation, half wave rectification, full wave rectification, and then the regulation, right? And then this clipping, sir, clipping operation can be regarded as a generic operation of rectification. So for rectification, you have seen that you have a sinusoidal signal, for example, and uh, any of the halves, either the positive half or the negative half, or both the halves, they get rectified. And in case of uh, your rectification, you have noticed that uh, this entire half is either absent or present at the output. Now here, you will see that we will do some wave saving operation. We can uh, arrange the diodes along with some battery with some resistance so that not this entire half cycle, a portion of the half cycle will be present and the portion of the half cycle might be clipped off. So we'll do some wave shaping operation using this clipping uh, circuit. And using this clamping circuit, what we can do is we can either add some DC level to the input or you can subtract some DC level to the input. So these are basically some uh, operations on the input signal that is already available to you. So in a large cell, so what do you mean by diode clipper? So I am not going into the circuit first. Suppose this is your input signal, a sinusoidal signal, say BP sin of omega t, which is writing on a zero, 0 DC, BP sin of omega t. Now if you uh, perform some clipping operation, you will see that a portion of your input, a portion of your input is clipped. If you consider this one, if you just compare, this is, suppose this is my input signal, this is my output signal. So here you see that the negative half cycle is completely present at the output side, right? And what you find, a portion of the positive half cycle is present, portion, not this entire positive half cycle, only a portion, up to say 0 0.7, right? Or you can have, you can also have some other modifications over there. So had this been the case, then in general, it is known as the clipping operation. And the circuit which is used for getting that particular waveform from this input is known as the clipper circuit. Okay? Similarly, what happens to the clamping operation? For clamping operation, I am not going to the circuit yet. And for clamping operation, what is happening? You have this particular input signal, say minus of uh, Vp sine of omega t. And suppose this particular input, as you can see over there, this particular input is riding on 0 DC, right, 0 average value, 0 DC. Now, using this clamping operation, you can change this DC level from 0 to some positive value or from 0 to some negative value. So here, this is represented by, the input is represented by Vp sine of omega t or minus Vp sine of omega t, okay. Now, whenever, so that means it is, it is riding on 0 DC. Right? Now, if I can write this expression like, so your input is something like that, Vp sine of omega t. That means it is writing on 0 dc. How can I identify this one? That means if you just integrate this over an entire period from 0 to 2 pi, then you will see that the result is equal to 0. Now, this becomes, after clamping operation, this becomes Vp sine of omega t. So this time varying part is remaining the same, right, time varying part is remaining the same, unlike the first circuit or first uh, output. Here you can see your time varying component is different, so therefore the DC component is also different. And here you will see that the time varying component being the same, but the DC part is present. So suppose plus some, let me write V average or VDC, or plus minus I can write, plus minus. That means your Vp sine omega t that is present, either it is riding on a positive uh, DC level that is plus Vab or it is riding on a negative DC level that is minus of Vab. Okay, that means you are basically shifting, yes? Vab is constant. Vab is constant, for a given side it is constant, right? So that means uh, you are basically shifting the input either by some positive level or by some negative level. You are adding some DC level. Your input, I mean, if you just consider the variation, the variation remaining the same. You have a sinusoidal signal. Here also you have a sinusoidal signal. But this sinusoidal, here you find that this is riding on 0 DC. 
and for uh, for for this clamping operation, you'll see that this is writing on a uh, I mean uh, a positive DC or on a negative DC. So if it is uh, writing on a positive DC, then it is known as uh, the positive clamping operation. And if it is writing on a zero uh, negative DC, that means uh, or in other words, uh, for your input signal, suppose your DC is zero. With respect to input, suppose the input is riding on zero DC, and if the output is riding on a positive DC, then it is known as the positive clamping operation. And if your uh, output is riding on a negative DC, then it is known as a negative clamping operation. And, and the corresponding circuits are known as the positive clamper and the negative clamper. Similarly, for the clipping circuit clipping operation, here you can see that this entire negative half cycle is present in the output. Right. That means there is no change in the output. There is no change in the negative half cycle. Only a portion of the positive half cycle is modified. Portion of the positive half cycle, not the entire positive half cycle is modified. That means a part of the positive half cycle is modified, or clipped, or limited. It is also known as a limiter circuit. So as you can see over there, direct clip on a limiter circuit. That means it can limit the, the maximum input or maximum output which is present at the output side. So as can be seen over here, uh, so for the input signal, it varies from plus GP to minus GP. And for the output, it varies from plus 0.7 to minus minus dp. That means the maximum positive level that you can get from this output is given by plus 0.7 volt. That means your output is clipped at 0.7. So you can you can't have any output which is higher than 0.7 volt. Right. So this circuit, I mean the, the circuit which can generate this output is known as a positive clipper circuit because it can clip the positive circuit, positive half cycle. Similarly, you can have the other way around, right? The negative clipper. Or both clip on both positive as well as negative clip on, and accordingly, you have to have the different types of circuits. Now, these are the basic notions about the clipping and the clamping operations, and then we will try to understand how can those operation or how can those waveforms can be obtained. So, first you consider this one, this circuit, and let's assume that the, the diodes are not ideal, rather, these diodes are following the uh, constant voltage model. That means, <coughs> say, the diode is having a uh, VD on value equal to 0 0.7. Now silicon diode VD on is equal to 0 0.7. So for this entire analysis, we will we'll assume that uh, all the diodes are not ideal and uh, they are having some uh, VD on, non zero VD on, and that value is given by 0 0.7. Okay. Now this is your input signal. The input varies from, say, uh, plus dp to minus dp. It's riding on 0 dc sinusoidal signals, dp sin omega t. This is your input. You have some resistance over there, R1. You have another load resistance over there, RL. And this time the diode is connected in parallel. Now if, you, if you compare this circuit with respect to our uh, rectifier circuit, half wave rectifier circuit, there you have the diode connected over there. There you have the diode, right? Now this time the diode is connected in the parallel path. That means you are taking the output across the diode itself. So if you connect the diode over there, instead of resistance, if you connect the diode over there, you understand what should be my output signal. For example, if my Suppose, suppose I am having a diode over there and I don't have any diode over there. Okay. Then for the given input, what should be the output? For the given input, your output should be something like this. Right? And this is nothing but your this is nothing but your VP minus zero. Right? Between minus 0 0.7. Now that time you have connected the diode in the series path and you have taken the output across this RL. Now suppose this, uh, obviously you can also have some resistance associated with the diode, don't forget about that. Now what you are doing this time, you have just connected the diode in the, in the parallel path. I mean the path ac across which you take the output. Then what happens? Now, you must understand that Whenever this input voltage is just greater than 0 0.7 volt, where 0 0.7 volt is the, the cutting voltage for the diode, when the input is just greater than 0 0.7 volt, then the diode becomes on. And since we are following the constant voltage model, so therefore uh, you don't have uh, any resistance. I mean, the, the on resistance of the diode equal to 0 ohms. The diode on resistance is equal to 0 ohms. Okay. So you expect that the when the input is greater, just greater than 0 0.7, then you have the current flow through this path only. Why through this path? Because here uh, you have two different branches. One is having a resistance of RL and the other one is having a resistance of 0 ohms only. So obviously, 
the current will flow through this path and what will be the voltage over there? You understand that this diode is nothing but this diode can be represented by this simply battery, right? Plus minus only. Typically, you should also have a resistance over there, but here I am assuming that this resistance will equal to zero. That is equal to zero. this R on that is equal to zero ohms. So if you take the output, so what is that? This is nothing but zero point seven only. Okay. Now this happens as long as your input is greater than 0 0.7. So whether it is, suppose your VP is equal to say 5 volt. So when your input is just greater than 0 0.7, that means from 0 0.7 to 5, during that range, your diode is on, the current will flow through the diode only, there is no current through the resistance, and therefore the output is given by 0 0.7 only. So when the input is just above 0 0.7, your output is clipped off at 0 0.7. Okay. Then what happens when your input is just less than 0 0.7? When the input is just less than 0 0.7, it might be positive or it might be negative. I mean 0 to 0 0.7 or 0 to minus 0. So during that time, the diode becomes off. So the diode becomes off and then the current will flow and then the current will flow through this path. Right? The current will flow through this path and what will be your output? So output, if you just apply this voltage division law, this output is given by RL upon R0 plus RL into V, into v. right, and if I assume that okay, this R1 is much much smaller, actually, actually what you can have, uh, actually your output V out, this V out expression, when the diode is not on, is given by, when the diode is not forward biased, is given by RL by R1 plus RL times V in, now if I assume that my RL value, R1 value is much much smaller with respect to RL, that means almost there is insignificant drop across this resistance R1. So you have this entire drop across RL. So your V out is approximately equal to V in. If not, if, if R1 and RL are comparable, you still have this particular shape, but the, the peak value might be different. It's not equal to like a minus VP. It might be less than that because you have significant drop taking place across this resistance R1. Yeah? So, what can I say about the about the uh, property of the circuit? Is, is, it a, is it a positive flipper or a negative flipper? Positive. 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 Because it, it clips positive. off the positive part or portion of the positive part, right? Next, what happens if I just... Uh, connect the diode upside down? If I just connect the diode upside down, then what happens? This time, the diode will be on in the negative upside. You know, because here you have the cathode terminal. Cathode terminal is present over there. This is the cathode terminal connected to A. So obviously, this potential, this is connected to ground. Anode is connected to ground. So therefore, whenever this potential is negative, when the potential over here is negative, then only the diode will be conducting and that voltage should be at least minus 0 0.7 volt. So what happens in the positive half cycle? In the positive half cycle, this potential at A is always greater than 0 and here the potential is 0, that means anode voltage is 0, cathode voltage is something greater than 0. Whether it is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, whatever it means. So diode will be off, so obviously the current will flow in this path, through this path and whatever be your input, that will be your output. If I just forget about the drop across R1. Okay? And then, when the potential at point A, because here, this is your reference point, the ground point. So, whenever this potential is equal to minus 0 0.7, right? When this potential, potential point A, is equal to minus 0 0.7, then what is the status of the the diode, here you see that the anode potential is kept at 0 volt and when the cathode potential is equal to minus 0 0.7, then the diode will be on. Now if the diode is on, then obviously here the current will flow through this path, right? Actually the current will flow through this path, here to here, like this. 
And here, what you can have, so now this time this diode is represented by this battery only. That will flow through this path because this is shorted now. Only you have only one battery over there, the resistance is equal to zero. So, therefore, if you just measure the voltage with respect to this two terminal, what will be the voltage? That is nothing but minus 0.7. Okay, now suppose, suppose in this case, suppose the diode is ITL. If the diode is ITL, if the diode is ITL, okay, it will be something like that. If the diode is ITL, that means given this input, suppose your input is this one. Your input is this one, a Vp sin of omega t from 0 to 2 pi, and your output is suppose Vp sin omega t from 0 to pi and 0 from 0 to pi to 2 pi. So that so that particular operation can be achieved either using a simple rectifier circuit or using this circuit as well. Right. So your input is this one. Your input, suppose I would like to generate one output from a given circuit, I don't know what kind of circuit it is. Suppose my input is this one and your output is this one. Okay. So, eventually you might think that okay, it is nothing but a half wave rectifier. So, that can be done using a circuit like this as we have seen last day. You should have a diode over there, present over there and you should have a resistance and then that can be obtained. Right? This is one option, or you can also achieve the same thing, the same output you can also achieve using this circuit. Moreover, uh, for the pr previous circuit, for the half wave rectifier circuit, you don't have any control over the uh, your, I mean, uh, the negative clipping. You don't have any control. If the value is just less than zero, the diode will become off. Right, but this time you, 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 you must have some control. And gradually, I'll also demonstrate how can this particular level can also be changed. This not the only is minus 0 0.7 always, because once it is minus 0 0.7 or plus 0 0.7, that means you don't have any control over the uh, the, the level at which the the output is clipped. If you use resistances, you can change. Sorry. If you use a resistance. Yeah, you can use the resistance, and generally, what we do, we will use a, actually in series with this particular diode, we will use a battery. It is a battery, right? So that this level can be modified. It's not like minus zero. Suppose you would like to make it okay. I would like to make it say 2.7 or 3.7, not 0 0.7 or not minus 0.7. Rather, say minus 1.3 or say minus 3.5, right? Then how can I do that? So that level can be changed. So it's it's a much more generic operation. It's a much more generic operation. And the specific case is your rectification. So rectification is a much more special case. And this one, this uh, clipping operation is much more general. You can have any level, any variation you can have. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, what we have already discussed. This circuit is for the positive clipping, as you know. This one is for the positive clipping, this circuit. During the positive half cycle, what do you expect? The diode is on, the current will flow in through this path, right? So, output should be clipped up at 0 0.7 and PD on, or if the diode is ideal, it will be clipped up at 0. And here, this one is the negative flipper circuit, okay? And you can calculate the actual output as I've already mentioned. This output is given by RL upon R1 plus RL times V in, and if R1 is, uh, is much, much less as compared to RL. So you can just neglect this one and then your output and output and input voltage are almost the same. <coughs> okay. Now let's uh, add some uh, add some uh, voltage source in series with this diode and let's see what happens. So it's known as a bias positive clipping. Okay. It's a bias positive clipping. So here what I can see some plus V bias some plus V bias is connected at the cathode terminal of the diode. 
So previously, when nothing was connected over there, when this cathode terminal is directly connected to ground, then the anode potential should be greater than 0.7, so that the diode becomes on. Now this time, since the cathode potential is held at V bias plus V bias, so the anode potential must be placed at V bias plus 0.7, because the difference between the anode and cathode should be 0.7. So, cathode potential is equal to uh, V bias plus V bias, it is a plus, it is plus not minus. So, since it is plus, so the anode potential should be at least V bias plus 0.7. Then you can expect that this uh, diode will be forward bias and if the diode is forward bias, then what will be the voltage difference between these two points? It is basically here you have a 0.7, this is nothing but a 0.7 over there plus minus and then you have this battery right so whenever the diode is forward biased then the output voltage is given by v bias plus minus plus minus so add it addition plus minus plus minus so v bias plus 0.7 so whenever your input is just greater than V bias plus 0 0.7, the diode will become on, the diode will become forward biased, this diode will become forward biased, and then this voltage is nothing but V bias plus 0 0.7. Okay? And if your input voltage is less than that, V bias plus, if it is less than V bias plus 0 0.7, then your output is nothing but R1 by R, RL by R1 plus RL times the input voltage. And if I assume that R1 is much much smaller with respect to RL, then uh, this output and input they are almost the same. Any doubt up to this? Okay. Then let's do some modification over there. Let's uh, let's have a circuit, something like this. Suppose this is not present. And suppose instead of this, what I have, I have this one now, minus V bias. Right? Then for this given input, what will be your? What will be your output? Then it will be flat. If V bias is less than 0.7, then it will be. Now let's, let's assume that V bias is greater than the mod value is greater. Suppose let's take some value. Uh, let's take, okay, uh, let me, yeah. Let me, let me take some numerical value. Suppose this value is say 5 volt, right? And this value equal to say, let it be say 2 volt. And your VD on is equal to say 0 0.7 volt. 2 volt. So, cathode potential is equal to, so the, what you find here, the cathode potential Vk is, is at minus two volt. Vk is what? Minus 2 volt. Vk is minus 2. Now, if Vk is minus 2, so what will be the status of the diode in the positive half cycle? It will be off. Off or on? Cathode is held at minus 2. Cathode is held at minus 2. Right? Cathode is held at minus 2. Right? And the positive half cycle anode is always positive. Anode is always positive. Right? So, what is the status? That will become on. It will be on. If the diode is on, what will be the voltage? So, once again, if the diode is on, then yeah, you understand that, okay, this is nothing but some... If the diode is on an ideal diode, I mean, uh, uh, RD on is equal to zero following the constant voltage model. Zero point seven plus minus zero point seven. The diode is on in the positive half cycle, right? 
then if you just measure the potential at point A, then what is the what is the value? Minus one point three. So minus one point three. What? That means your minus of d by s minus of point seven. Minus of within bracket d by s minus point seven. Okay. Now as long as the diode remains in the quad by s region, this will be the output. That is minus one point three. So when can we expect that the diode will be in the reverse bias? Because here at the cathode the potential is minus two. So when the anode potential, or rather the anode to cathode potential, is less than the the median value, then the diode will move from the from the forward bias to the reverse bias. So what is that value? When the anode potential, when the anode potential over here V A is equal to minus one point three, minus one point three. Hold on, obviously after minus one point three, next value will be minus say one point three one, one point three two. That means less than that because you are considering that particular regime. Okay, then the diode will become off. If the diode is off, what is the status? What will be the output? It's exactly the same as the input, right? Because if the diode is off, so this part you can just neglect, right? Then what will be the wave shape then? How does it look like? Same as before. Same as before. What will be the output then? In the positive half cycle, the diode is on. That means constant. The diode cycle minus one point three. Yes. This cycle. Nah, just put Okay. Something like that. Is it a positive clipper or a negative clipper? Positive. Positive clipper. Is it a positive clipper or a negative clipper? It clips the positive part. It retains the negative part. The negative half cycle or negative peak is retained. Sorry, negative peak is retained. This negative peak is retained, right? So it's a positive clipper, but bias positive. So the bias it can be plus G bias or can be minus G bias. So the plus bias you have this kind of a form. Now this time what happens? This clipping value. So when it is positive bias, then this is the clipping value V bias plus 0.7. It's negative. Then that value is reduced from here to this. Minus of V bias minus 0.7. That means minus V bias plus 0.7. Here you have plus V bias plus 0.7. Yeah, they are here minus V bias plus 0.7. Clear? Anybody having any doubt? Okay. Then let's move to the biased negative clipper. So for biased negative clipper, what happens? Obviously, you understand that for negative clipper, the diode should be connected upside down, right? And for unbiased case, that was connected to ground. Now this time it is connected to ground through some battery voltage. Now what is the status of the diode in the positive half cycle? What is the status of the diode in the positive half cycle? What do you expect? Huh? Anode potential is held at some negative. So anode potential V A always this anode potential is held at minus V bias. Irrespective of the cathode potential, this is always held at minus V bias anode potential, right? And in the positive half cycle, obviously the cathode potential is greater than zero. It's greater than zero. And I'm assuming that mod V bias is greater than the cutting point zero point seven. That I'm assuming. Okay. So therefore, the the diode will be off in the positive half cycle. The anode potential is held at minus. Cathode potential is something positive, so anode to cathode voltage difference is negative, so that will be off. 
If the diode is off, what is the output? The output should look like same as the input. Now it will remain in this particular regime as long as this difference, anode to cathode difference, is less than 0 0.7. Whenever it is greater than that, then the diode becomes on. So, for example, let's take some value, some numerical value. Let's take that uh, V bias. That value is equal to say two volt. Once again, V bias is equal to two volt. And let's assume that uh, okay, VD on is equal. Okay, that is given. That is 0 0.7 volt. So the anode voltage is at minus two. And in the negative half cycle, as long as this voltage is, I mean, this difference from here to here, as long as this difference is less than 0 0.7 anode to cathode, then the diode will become off. So whenever, so here you have minus 2, at the anode side you have minus 2, when the cathode voltage is held at, so when can we expect that the diode will become on? You have to ensure that this voltage, the cathode potential, the potential at over here, potential at point A, whenever this voltage is less than this voltage by 0.7. So here it is minus 2. Here it is minus 2. So whenever this voltage is held at minus 2.7, then you expect that the diode will become on. Now if the diode is on, if the diode is on, then here you have this is a representation of the diode minus plus and here you have another minus plus so these two will be added simply added minus plus minus plus so then this will be your output waveform clear so whenever your input is less than minus of v bias plus 0.7 then the output is clipped off at minus of device plus point seven. I mean minus within bracket device plus point seven. So it's a kind of negative clipping operation. Why negative clipping? Because the positive part is retained. Positive peak is retained, but the negative peak is not retained. Okay. So minus of two point seven. So it will be clipped off at minus two point seven. Clear? Then let's do that change. Let's now make this correction and this time now suppose suppose this is not present and I'm just changing the polarity of the battery, something like that, plus minus. So let it be twofold. What will be the status of the diode in the positive? <laughs> So the anode voltage is held at 2 volt, plus 2 volt. So this time you find that anode voltage is held at plus 2 volt, not minus 2. It's a bias, but plus 2, positively biased. So it's basically positively biased negative. Right. Last time we have discussed like negatively biased negative. So obviously, initially when the input is at say 0, so what is the status? Yeah, input is zero. Then on, then on, then on. Input is zero. I mean, the input voltage is zero over there. Or just, greater, or just greater than zero over there. What is the status of the diode? That is on. If it is on, then once again, you can represent this light. So if it is on, so if it is on, then you can have this kind of thing, right? Minus plus, plus minus, minus plus, plus minus, okay? So, what will be the final value? Uh, two volt minus minus plus plus minus. So two volt minus zero point so that is plus one point three volt. Uh, right. So as long as so it's plus one point three volt only. Right. So as long as your that voltage the voltage at point A 
cathode voltage over there whenever it is less than 1.3 volt whenever it is less than 1.3 volt the drop between the anode to cathode is greater than 0.7 so that will be on between the power pass and accordingly the corresponding voltage over there will be 1.3 only right then what happens after that that switches off and then it will current will flow through this resistance R1 oil combination then the output will just uh, uh, replicate the input right then what will be the corresponding wave from then suppose this is my 1.3 Suppose this. suppose this is my one, okay. This is my one point three line, one point three volt, for example. And let's take some different color. So this is my 1.3 volt line. So as long as your input is less than 1.3, the output is equal to 1.3, right? So zero to 1.3, it will be 1.3. Then it will follow the input. like this and after that whenever the input drops below 1.3 then what is the status of the diode? That will be on. If the diode is on what is the output? That one minus 1 minus 0 0.7 plus 2 volt that is plus 1.3 volt. It will be on something like that okay. Is it a positive flipper or negative flipper? Negative, negative flipper. But positively biased negative flipper. Right. It's a positively biased negative flipper. Right? So you have seen four types of waveforms. Positively biased, positive flipper, negatively biased, positive flipper, positively biased, negative flipper, negatively biased, negative flipper. So for any given circuit, you have to understand how does the diode operate or how does the circuit operate. Don't try to remember the waveforms corresponding to positively biased, negative P bar, negative bar, positive or something like that. Don't do that. Otherwise, you will be misguided. Try to understand how does the diode, how does the circuit operate. Yes. Okay. Because sometimes, so here it is given that uh, the V bias is greater than the threshold voltage, that is cutting voltage. Might be the threshold V bias is less than the cutting voltage. That time scenario will be just reversed or completely different. Sir, so, so the portion after that of the is small than the Which one? After the. Ah, whenever your input is, uh, once again, whenever the input is less than 1.7, uh, 1.3. Yeah, if it is if it is less than 1.3, what is the status of the diode? That is, that is on because that volt is always held at 2 volt. That volt is held at 2 volt. So if, if this voltage is less than 1.3, so diode is off. Diode is on. And if the diode is on, then obviously this minus 1 point, plus 1.3 will be held over there. So whenever this voltage is greater than 1.3, this voltage is 2. If this is greater than 1.3. Then the difference is less than 0.7, then the diode will become off, reverse bias. Now, as long as this voltage is less than 1.3, so diode is on. So, less than 1.3 means what? Either in the positive half cycle and obviously the entire negative half cycle. So, we are clipping the negative part. Yeah, we are, we are clipping the negative part. There is no negative peak. 
positive is not clicked. The positive pick is retained. So you have to check whether the positive pick is retained or not. So here we can, um, I mean the positive pick is retained, but negative pick is absent. Right? So since we are clipping the negative side, the negative is completely absent. So that's why it's known as a negative clipper. The positive part is retained, positive peak is retained, but negative peak is absent. Okay. So having understood the positive flip bias, negative flip bias, negative flip bias, positive flip bias, and all these combinations, four combinations, then what happens if I have in a circuit both the positive as well as the negative flip both are negative, both are Right. That means? Yeah. A combination of positive and negative flip or something like that. So there you have, once again let's assume that your input is varying from plus 10 to minus 10. Here you have plus 5 volt here, minus 5 volt here. Right? And, uh, okay, the diodes are following the constant voltage model with uh, 0 0.7 volt as their cutting voltage. Now what is the status of the diode? Initially what happens when the input just, input voltage is just greater than 0 volts, what is the status of each of the diodes? You check this anode voltage, uh, cathode voltage for D1 is held at plus 5 volt and the anode voltage for D2 is held at minus 5 volt. Okay, then during the positive half cycle when the input is just greater than 0, out of these two diodes D1 and D2, which one will be on? D1. Huh? You do let me off. Oh, let, me, let, me, let me write it down. V of K1 is equal to 5 volt, right? And V of A2 that is held at minus 5 volt. Okay. Cathode of diode 1 is held at plus 5 volt and anode of diode 2 is held at minus 5 volt. So whenever your input, I am assuming that D1, Vd1 and Vd2, that is equal to 0 0.7 respectively. So when the input is just above 0 line, what is the status of diode D1? Cathode is held at positive, plus 5. So anode should be greater than 5.7. So that this D1 will be on. What is the status of diode D2? Anode is held at negative. Right, so however positive it may be, maybe. So, uh, that it is also? Oh, so both of them are off. Both of them are off. Right? Now, since both of them are off, you don't have any current flow. Okay. So, if you don't have any current flow, so th there is no drop across this resistance. If you just connect your voltmeter at this particular point, point A, so this potential is exactly equal to this potential. So your input will follow the output. Right. Both, the, both of them are off. Now obviously, uh, for the second diode, that means D2, what happens in the positive half cycle? The anode is held at minus 5. Now if the cathode is held at something positive, there is no chance for the diode D2 to be on in the positive half cycle. Right, it's less than minus 5%, but that doesn't happen in the negative half, positive half cycle. Now, for that D1, the cathode is held at plus 5. Now, if the anode is greater than 5.7, then the diode will be gone. That D1. And when it is greater than 5.7, then it will be shorted. It will be on, forward bias, plus minus, another plus minus. So, it will be clipped off at plus 5.7. Right? So when the input is greater than 5.7, the output is clipped at 5.7. And when the input goes below 5.7, once again this diode D1 will be off, 
and uh, it will follow the input in a positive sense. Clear? Now, what type is the negative half cycle? Similarly, in the negative half cycle, there is no scope for the diode D1 to become one because the anode is held at uh, the cathode is held at uh, plus 5 volt and anode, the anode is negative. Obviously, D1 will be off. And D2 can be on if the potential is held at minus, uh, greater than minus, uh, rather less than minus 5.7 or more wise greater than 5.7. Mod wise greater than 5.7 or less than uh, minus 5.7. Before that, both of them are off. Both of them are off. And accordingly, this an input and output, I mean, the output will follow the input. That D1 cannot be on in the negative half cycle. D2 can be on if this voltage is less than minus 5.7 volt. Now, when it is less than minus 5.7 volt, then the diode D2 will be on and you have a plus minus and another plus minus. So, minus 5.7. Right? So, when your input is less than minus 5.7, the output is clipped at minus 5.7. And once again, when the uh, input is just above minus 5.7, once again, both of them are becoming off and the output will follow the input. So, this is the nature of the output of the Whenever you have both positive and negative clipper bias, bias, positive and negative clipper connected in parallel. Yeah. Sir, can we use this output to obtain a DC signal? Right? Can we use this output and uh, feed it in a rectifier circuit and obtain a DC output? But remember that is not a DC. So this is not DC, but if we feed it into a, a full wave rectifier circuit. Which one? The full wave rectifier. No, which one you would like to provide? Which which input? So the output. So the output we got from this. Uh, okay, the output we have got like this one. This is your output. This is your output. Okay. And you can feed it in a, a full wave rectifier circuit. Full wave rectifier circuit, okay. Then what do you expect? You should expect, okay, for full wave, it is something like that, right? Like this. Not perfect. That you can get. Right? Okay. Now, so far you have seen that uh, we have used a simple uh, battery for biasing. V bias, plus V bias, minus V bias, something like that. Now, you can also have a variable uh, voltage by virtue of this uh, combination. For example, suppose you have a supply over there and you have this R2-R3 combination. And if you just change this by, by means of some potentiometer, then obviously the bias voltage you can also vary. It's not a fixed one. So far you have seen that this bias voltage is a constant one, some V bias, plus V bias, minus V bias, 2 volt, minus 2 volt, plus 3 volt, minus 3 volt. You can also change this one. If I use a, okay, we have a simple supply over there, and you have a, a resistance combination R2, R3, and if you just change this value, then obviously you can also have a control over the bias voltage. And accordingly, uh, this will be modified. The same circuit, only the bias voltage can be modified accordingly. Okay. What happens, uh, so far uh, we have assumed that whenever the diode is on, whenever the diode is on, we have assumed that uh, the diode is represented, when the diode is off, then obviously it is nothing but an open circuit. But when the diode is on, we have assumed that this diode is represented by virtue of one battery, something like that, and nothing else. That is ideal, or rather the, the, the diode model which follows the constant voltage. Constant voltage VD on over there, say 0 0.7. It's a perfect voltage source, acting as a perfect voltage source, 0 0.7 volt. But remember, apart from this 0 0.7 volt, 
for any practical time, you should also have a resistance in series, which he calls the RD. So previously, whenever the diode is on, irrespective of your input voltage, whether the input goes positive and pretty large, the, the corresponding voltage level remains constant at some voltage, say plus 5.7, plus 2.7, something like that. Right. Because I am assuming that the diode is nothing but, is acting as a voltage, it's a battery, nothing else. If you have a sing, uh, single bat, single diode, that means only 0 0.7 or minus 0 0.7, depending on the polarity. And if you have a battery, or, I mean the bias voltage in series with that diode, then either D bias plus 0.7 or D bias minus 0.7 or minus D bias plus 0.7 or minus D bias minus 0.7, depending upon the type of the uh, limiting circuit, whether it is a positive flipper or negative flipper or whether the positive bias or negative bias. You have four combinations. Plus minus D bias, plus minus VDR. Four combinations, right? But remember, the DAD is not actually the, the ideal one for this. It's not like only 0 0.7. You should also have a resistance. You see, although the value of this resistance is very small, but you have some resistance. So, the voltage across the diodes, if I, if I call this voltage, so let it be say, uh, let it be say VD. So, this voltage is nothing but your uh, VD on plus you should have this RD on times ID. Right. So, all that I am saying that whenever the diode is on, the voltage will remain constant, the voltage level will be constant, it is kept at a particular level, but you know that does not happen. That does not happen according, and actually you do not have the feel of complete clipping. It's, it cannot be constant because whenever the current increases, you have more input signal, and whenever the current increases, Right, so this RD, ID, RD drop it will, will also increase, but the value of this RD is very small, so do not expect that, okay, yeah, it will increase something like that. For example, for example, suppose this is your input, and suppose I am considering something uh, like a positive flipper. So, so far you have seen that, okay, it is something like that, it will be constant and then it will follow this path. So, during this region, whenever the diode is on, during this region, you have assumed that, okay, it is almost constant. It is constant, exactly constant, VD, VD on plus uh, your uh, V bias, right, but remember it is not constant, it is not constant, rather if you just observe that, that part of the circuit, so in that part of the circuit what you have, plus minus 0 0.7 volt, plus you have a resistance, plus minus you have this bias, so let it be 2 volt, right, and suppose let, let us consider you have a 10 ohms resistance. So as of now, we have just neglected this ten ohms. So as long as this voltage is greater than that, 2.7 volt, the output is held at 2.7. But it's not the case, right? And suppose here, what you have, say for example, you have a one kilo ohms resistance, in the series form, and forget about the RL. The RL is not important when the diode is on. So when your input, so here you have the input. A sinusoidal signal. So when your input is just greater than 2.7 volt, the light is on, and what about the current? What about the current? This current is given by input minus 2.7 divided by this 1 kilo ohms plus 10 ohms. Right? And then this current will flow through this 10 ohms resistance. So, what I can write over there, this current ID, this ID, this expression for ID is nothing but your V in minus whenever the diode is on. I am just considering that particular time because if the diode is off, there is no diode current, ID is equal to 0. So, when the diode is on, then what is the diode current? ID is equal to V in. Minus, you have this bias voltage over there, plus 0.7 you have to consider, 
So that will be on when the input is greater than 2.7 only. So V in minus 2.7 divided by you have 1 kilo ohms and 10 ohms. So 1 kilo, 1 0. 1 0, 1 0. Right. And then you have same, then what about your uh, voltage drop across this resistance? So if I call it like VRD, so this VRD is nothing but 10 upon 1010 multiplied with V in minus 2.7. Okay? Then what about your final output? Your final output is given by? Yes. So it's VD on. VD on, what is the VD on value? Okay, here you have also considered this bias voltage, so it should be, uh, I should not write VD on, otherwise it can create some confusion. So, since we have used some bias voltage over there, so therefore your V out, that means the voltage across this diode and uh, battery combination is nothing but 2.7, that is fine. 0.7 plus 2 volt, 2.7 plus you have this VRT, that means V in minus 2.7 upon 101, right. Yeah, so Already, so, so far we have just neglected that part. We have neglected that part. We are happy with this 2.7. But remember that output, okay, it's a constant 2.7 plus something, V in minus 2.7 by 101. Right? So therefore, if you plot the transfer characteristics, V out versus V in, as of now, we have just neglected the second part. So your V out versus V in was something like constant. And that means if I just consider this one over there, it was V out versus, even if V in changes, we assume that the output is constant. So that was our result as of now. But remember that is not constant. This V out also varies linearly with V. Okay. This also varies linearly with V in. And accordingly, uh, you have this slope. That is all about the transfer characteristics. Then what about your output wave from? How does it look like then? How does the output look like? What do you expect? V out is equal to some, some 2.7. Okay, fine. So, 2.7 fine, so it has reached 2.7 and then depending on the V in value, V in minus 2.7 by 101. It will also increase and that variation is a linear variation. Right. So if you have a sinusoidal variation there, they are, they are also have a sinusoidal variation but with less magnitude. Okay. So then it will be Something like that, okay. And in the negative half cycle, we have this one. So if I exaggerate that part, what we have, we have this one, and there you have something like this. Okay, so although I am saying that okay, it will be constant, but if I incorporate the practical diode model, there is a drop across the diode. Remember that holds okay, okay, here we have constant, okay, only 10 ohms, so that's why you understand that V in minus 2.7 and 101, so that value you can just neglect, very small. For example, if it is, suppose V in is equal to say 5 fold, so 5 folds when it is at 5, so 5 minus 2.7 is 2.3, 2.3 upon 101. What is that? 
It is very small in the range of few millivolts, right? But remember that addition, although I have exactly that one, but addition, although I can consider okay, that will be yeah. Suppose it is something like that. Something like that. So it's not exactly constant. Right. That is your output versus input character across time with respect to time. And if I draw output versus input, the transfer characteristics, then it will look something like that. This one. So here input and output they are same, so that's why you have a straight line. That is off. That is off, so input equal to output. So y is equal to mx. So input should be slightly more than because of the characteristics. Which one? Diode is off. Even when the diode is off. If the diode is off, yeah. The output should be slightly lesser than input. Yes. The still, still, if you just plot now, V out is equal to some constant into V. It's not exactly equal to V. So that slope might not be 45 degree, you can call it. Slightly less than V. Yeah, you are true that V out is not exactly equal to V in because you have R1, R RL by R1 plus RL and that value is less than 1 unity. So you don't expect, okay, that is equal to 45 degree. But you can write that y is equal to some constant into x. So it's a straight line passing through origin. But that slope might not be equal to unity. It's not, I mean, the corresponding angle might not be equal to 45 degree. It will be less than 45 degree. But y equal to mx, that, 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 that condition has to be, is, is true, right? That m can be less than 1. Yeah? That non identity is in the limiting circuit. Okay. So far, so good. So, now let's move to the next part, the clamping part. So, for the clipping part, you have seen that a portion of the output, I mean, uh, if I just observe this output signal, in the output, uh, you find that uh, a portion of the input signal gets clipped. Either the positive uh, part gets clipped, whenever you call it like a positive flipper, or the negative part gets clipped. Now, where, now in case of your clamping circuit, what happens? Uh, in case of clamping circuit, the wave shape is retained. Last time, in the clipping circuit, the wave shape is distorted. You have a sinusoidal signal and you have a distorted sinusoidal signal. You don't have the, you don't have the both the positive and the negative peaks. Either you have positive peaks for the negative flipper, or negative peaks for the positive flipper and you don't have any peaks for both positive and the negative flipper, the parallel combination, right? However, for the clamp peaks operation, you have both, I mean, the, the wave shape is retained, signal is retained, I mean, the variation is retained, but this time your input is varying. I mean, the input uh, this time, uh, here you find that this input uh, is varying on, on a zero DC level. And now if I add some DC level or subtract some DC level from this uh, given DC level, then it is known as a clamping operation. Okay. Now let's first uh, have a look at this circuit. How does this circuit operate? So it will add, either it will add some positive level, DC level, or it will just subtract some DC level from the uh, input signal itself. As you can understand, uh, this diode will be on in the negative half cycle. So that will be on in the negative half cycle because the anode is connected over there. So it should be negative. In the negative half cycle, this uh, this BAK should be greater than zero. Right. So if the diode is on, then you can expect that the current will flow through this path. And you understand that when the diode is on, the on resistance of the diode is very small. And last we have discussed while while <coughs> Considering the filter uh, the circuit, the, the RC time constant, the charging time constant, discharging time constant. So whenever the diode is on, so the charging time constant is nothing but this capacitor C value multiplied with the RD value, the resistance diode is on resistance, and this on resistance diode is very small. Ideally zero, practically few tens of ohms. So therefore you can expect that if the diode is on, then uh, this capacitor will charge to the peak value, max value, very quickly. Because time constant is very small, RDC time constant, RD uh, corresponding to the diode itself and uh, the C value of this. Okay? Then what is the peak value at which uh, this uh, capacitor is charged? 
if the radius i is not ideal, so you have a plus minus 0 0.7 volt drop over there, right? A 0 0.7 volt drop over there, and there you have this input signal. So the input peak, so when the input is at plus Vp over there in the negative half cycle, so plus and then plus minus, minus plus then plus minus. That means Vp minus 0 0.7. So the capacitor up to 0. Point, uh, Vp in minus 0 0.7. Right. Now, what happens after this? Negative half cycle, the diode will be on, the diode will be forward biased, and it will carry the current through this. And obviously, this RL is having no use during the negative half cycle. So, the capacitor will be charged with this side positive, this side negative. Okay. Now, what happens in the positive half cycle? In the positive half cycle, the diode becomes off. The radius becomes off, and then this this retained charge within the capacitor it will be discharged through this RLC combination. And if I assume now there is an assumption, if I assume that this RLC time constant is much much higher as compared to the the time period of this or half of the time period of this, so I can assume that the capacitor discharges very little, or it can or what I can say or what we can assume is that this capacitor will retain this charge. Right, it will return this charge that is Vp, I mean, and accordingly this voltage is given by Vp in minus 0 0.7. So, now if I observe this output, so what is this output? How can I write this output in terms of input? So, your output potential over there, so there you have V out, there you have V in, V in plus Vp in minus 0 0.7. Yes, so V out is how much? Minus plus here, if you consider from this side, V out plus minus, right, with respect to ground. If I apply KVL, here you have plus minus, plus plus minus. Okay? I can apply KVL in this loop. V in minus plus, V in another minus plus, and another plus minus. So this plus this plus this, this plus this, and here you have minus because V out to zero, minus to plus, minus to plus, plus to minus. So this plus this minus this equal to zero, or in other words, this plus this equal to V out. So V out is equal to V in plus the and voltage, uh, peak minus zero point seven. Okay, so. What about your output? So output is nothing but your input signal V in plus the, the highest voltage at which the capacitor is charged, that is Vp in minus. Now here, since the DC level is shifted up, so that's why this circuit is known as the positive clamper circuit. Positive clamper circuit whenever the diode is connected in that fashion. Anode is connected to the ground potential. Now obviously you understand that for the a uh, negative clamper circuit will be just the opposite, just the reverse. So for the negative clamper circuit, the diode is connected something like that. Now here, this diode will be on in the positive half cycle. And when it is on, then the capacitor will, will charge accordingly. And this is the polarity. Last time it was plus this side, minus that side. You have plus there, minus there. Because that is the directional charging current. Last time the charging current was flowing in that direction, anti-clockwise. This time it is flowing in the clockwise direction, so this side positive, this side negative. And here, uh, what about that voltage? That voltage is nothing but Vp in minus 0 0.7, you can expect. Plus minus Vp in minus 0.7, right? So I can call, okay, that is my Vc, that is equal to Vp in the peak value minus of 0 0.7, right? Then this time you have, here you have Vp, you are being present over there, and this time this Vc is plus minus, last time it was minus plus. So this time you have minus plus, plus minus, plus minus. So this minus this, minus this. 
equal to zero. Or in other words, I can say that this V out is nothing but this voltage minus this voltage. Okay. So this time your V out is given by V in minus V C. Last time your V out was V in plus V C. Positive clamp. It is uh, known as a negative clamper because we are adding some negative DC level. Now if the, if the actual input is writing on zero, zero DC, then this value is less than that. Suppose this peak is held at say, uh, say 5 volt, for example, plus 5, minus 5. Suppose this is 5 volt, 5 volt, minus 5 volt. So therefore, uh, initially your input was writing on zero DC, and then the output will write on minus 4.4. 4. Minus 5, plus 0.7. Clear? Any doubt? Anybody having any doubt? Okay. We can also add some. Okay. We can also add some uh, bias in, in in the clamper sinking as well. As of now, we have not used anything over there. Now this time, a battery is connected with anode is held at minus 10. And we have an input something like that, plus 20 to minus 20. Is it a positive clamp or a negative clamp? What do you feel? Positive. Positive clamp. Okay. Now, what will be the level at which, uh, what will be the voltage level at which the capacity starts. Let us assume that the ride is ideal. Let us assume the ride is ideal. Okay. The clipping or the clip then clamped at the same time. Hmm? No clipping. No clipping. Uh, the battery is connected to the diode. Yes, at least connected to the diode. So whenever you are, so you understand that whenever these force are diode, so suppose the diode is, is, a, is an ideal diode, right? So there is no drop across this diode. So whenever this voltage the voltage over here, whenever it is negative and more than negatively more than minus 10, I mean less than minus 10, or more wise, if it is greater than 10 in the negative cycle, then this diode will be on, right? Then what will be the voltage across this uh, two plates of the capacitor when it is completely charged? Now forget about this point value, uh, assuming that the diode is ideal, ideal diode, that means there is no drop, okay. So whenever it is at 20, minus 20, I mean the, even in the negative half cycle, so plus 20 over there and then another plus 2, plus 2, plus 2 minus, so 20, another minus 10, that means plus 10 only, plus 10 only. 20 over there, in the negative half cycle this is plus 20, in the positive half cycle this is plus 20, negative half cycle this is plus 20, 20 plus minus, that means 20 minus 10, that is 10, plus 10, right? And if you consider, okay, uh, this is uh, this is not an ideal, then obviously if it is not ideal, in that case you have something like this, minus plus 0 0.7, then minus 9.3, uh, plus 9.3. 20 minus 10 minus 0.7. And if we forget about this 0.7 part, if we just forget about this 0.7 part, then it is only 10 volt. 10 volt plus minus 10 volt. Here, yeah. there is a positive clamp part. So, here input is writing on a 0 DC, 20 to minus 20. What will be the output? The output will write on, on a level of 10. 10 to 30 and 10 to minus 10. Okay. Something like that. 10 to 30. 
20 variation and 10 to minus another 20 variation. Plus 20 variation, minus 20 variation. If I assume that the ride is ideal, if it is not ideal, then obviously we should have some drop and it cannot be 30, rather it will be like. Huh? Not 30 points, sir. The uh, uh, capacitor is charged and the voltage is given by how much? When the capacitor is completely charged, what is the voltage? 9.3. Nine you have a plus 10 volt, uh, plus 20, minus 10, minus 0.7. That is minus 9.3 volt. Is it a Ah, So minus of uh, 9.3 volt plus 9.3 volt. So it will be added to this. So when it is 20, it will be 20 point, uh, 29 point 3. 29 point 3. 29.3 Right. It will be reduced by 0.7. Huh. So here the change is uh, given by, so here the shift is given by 10 volt. Right. That shift is given by 10 volt. If the ride is uh, ideal, if it is not, then the shift will be given by for ideal case it is 10 volt and for non-ideal case it is 9.3 but the wave shell remains the same we have the same sign effect of signal we have some assumption obviously the first assumption is that uh, this diode is having almost zero resistance or no resistance so that the charging time constant is almost zero so the capacitor can be charged instantaneously and at the same time the discharging time constant is very high. very high so that the capacitor can retain this charge and there is no uh, change between the uh, two plates of the capacitor voltage okay any doubt so far you have used only sinusoidal signal that can be your rectangular waveform as well okay and that is Let me take one after another. Yeah. First we consider this circuit. Input is the same, plus V to minus V. It's not sinusoidal, it's a square wave. Right, plus V and minus V. And let us assume, okay, the diodes are ideal, ideal diodes. Okay. What is that circuit? Positive clamper or negative clamper? Negative, negative, negative. You have to identify, no? Yeah. You have to identify. Sometimes I'm have, I'm, I have uh, this experience that given a circuit, given a circuit like this in an exam, and when I ask the students to say what kind of circuit it is, even uh, in your uh, like uh, the MCQ test, what kind of circuit it is? So positive clamper, positive clipper, negative clamper, negative clipper. Many people are confused sometimes. You have to understand whether it's a clipper or clamper or rectifier or whatever it may be. Or regulator, you have to understand. No? That's the kind of MCU question you can have in your class yes, or semester. Clipper or clamper or rectifier, whatever it may be. So if you just observe this one, it's a it's a clamper circuit, right? Clamper circuit. So negative clamper. Negative clamper. And if the ride is ideal. So that is ideal, so you have like uh, plus minus V over there, okay, negative clamper plus minus, so what will be the output VO, VO is nothing but VI minus V, negative clamper, VO this output voltage plus minus over there, here you have plus minus, here you have plus minus. So if I write down the KVL, so VI minus plus, then plus minus, that means minus V, then another plus minus, minus V, that is equal to 0. So VO is given by VI minus V. Try to understand. We have six such circuits. Okay. All of them are clamper. Positive clamper, negative clamper, 
I mean positive unbiased clamper, positive bias clamper, negative bias clamper, something like that. So VI minus V minus VO is equal to zero. So VO is equal to VI minus V. So when VI is plus V, output is zero. When the VI is zero, output is minus V. When the VI is minus V, the output is minus V. So you have this fluctuation once again, plus V to minus V, a 2V change. But we have the DC level is held at minus V. Clear? Okay. Then let's move to the. Let me have another 5 to 10 minutes. Okay. I think that part is, uh, it will be easier for you. This one. This one is easier now. Same thing, positive clamper, the only change is here you have minus plus. Okay, so this time what you can write minus plus V minus V naught that is equal to 0. So V naught is equal to VI plus V. Right, so if the input is at 0, the output will be, I mean, if the input is at plus V, the output will be, will be at 2V. And when the input is at minus V, the output will be at 0. Okay? Okay, fine. This is the last slide. Now, what happens if I have a battery over there? It's a negative, negative clamper. But remember, there is a battery. Now, since there is a battery, so, and if the diet is ideal, so once again, you have like plus minus Vc and that Vc value is given by, what is that? The peak value is, that is V, no? V minus? V minus V1. V minus V1? Yes, sir. So, what is your output? This output is given by? Input minus VC minus VC, right? Yes, it's a negative clamper, mm -hmm. and accordingly, if you just plug in the values, then you'll be having uh, when the input is at V, the output will be at V1, when the input is at 0, then the output will be at V minus V1. Mm -hmm. Negative sense, and similarly, here. The corresponding VC prime, if I call, that VC plus prime is how much? V plus V1. Okay. Same thing. And you can also apply the same notion over there whenever you have a positive kind of. Yeah. The only change is that here you have these variations. This time you have this side positive and this side negative. Clear? Okay, fine. So with this, your uh, unit number one on diet circuit is completed. CO1. Yeah, CO1. And uh, next day we will move to the uh, unit number two uh, that is on the bipolar junction transition.